This is the most frequently asked fly fishing question. One that you'll ask yourself every single time you're out on the river. What fly should I use today? Now it seems like a simple question on the surface starts to get quite complicated and overwhelming, especially if you're a beginner, when you start to browse the thousands and thousands of fly patterns available at your local fly shop, sporting goods store, or online. And don't even get me started on all this new terminology. It's like learning a foreign language. Mayflies, midges, caddis, stoneflies, scuds, sculpins. <sighs> Today, the goal is simple. We're gonna clarify the confusion surrounding flies. What they are, what they imitate, and what patterns you for sure 100% need in your fly box. In order to feel confident out on the water and start catching some fish, we need to be familiar with what we like to call the ABCs of fly fishing flies. Once we've laid that foundation, we can start talking about specific fly patterns. The A in our ABCs is bug types and food sources. In fly fishing, we're imitating naturally occurring food sources with an artificial fly. Flies are hand tied using materials like feathers, hair, foam, and other natural or synthetic materials. They have no scent or taste. This ain't no magic rainbow power bait or a live worm that just seems to attract fish from a mile away. And so our job as fly anglers while we're out on the water is to identify a food source, tie on a fly that looks like that food source, and then make it act like that food source with the goal of tricking a hungry fish. So what do fish eat? For the purposes of this video, we're mainly gonna focus on trout, but the same principles apply no matter what type of fish you're going after. The majority of a trout's diet consists of aquatic insects with the four main types being mayflies, caddis, stoneflies, and midges. Now we could spend a ton of time diving really deep into this subject. In fact, in the future, we're gonna have an entire masterclass dedicated to bugs and fly selection, so stay tuned for that. But when we talk about aquatic insects, no matter the species, their life cycles are quite similar. Yes, the stages and the names and the timing, it's all different, but the general overall trend is the same. These bugs start off living at the bottom of the river. When they decide to move out of mom and dad's basement and become full-fledged adults and take on the world, they make their way to the water surface and then hatch into an adult. Those adults will then do their thing to make new baby bugs, lay their eggs, then die. And the circle of life continues. If you've ever heard an experienced angler tell you that there's a hatch going on, this is what they're referring to. But aquatic insects aren't the only thing trout eat. You've got bugs like grasshoppers, beetles, ants that grow up on land, then get blown into the water and chomped by a fish. These are referred to as terrestrials. You've also got freshwater crustaceans like scuds and sow bugs. And then you've got other smaller fish, crayfish, leeches, and more. Now that we're more familiar with the different bug types and food sources, it's time to move on to the B of our ABCs, which is fly types. Like I said at the beginning of the video, in fly fishing, we're imitating naturally occurring food sources with an artificial fly. If we go back to our food sources, You'll notice that some are below the water surface, some are close to the top, and some are actually riding on top of the water. And so to cover all of our bases, we've got four different types of flies. For those bugs and food sources below the water surface, we'll use nymphs and streamers. Nymphs imitate bugs in the larval or nymphal stages, the baby bugs. And streamers imitate bigger meals like other fish, leeches, and crayfish. A lot of these patterns will either have a tungsten or a brass bead, and maybe even some heavy wire attached to the fly, which will cause it to sink faster and get it down to where those food sources and fish are hanging out. We'll imitate those bugs that are traveling to the surface or get caught up in the surface film with our third fly type, emergers. And then we'll use dry flies to imitate adult aquatic insects or other bugs that are actually flying around and floating along the water surface. One thing that makes fly fishing both fun and challenging 
is that river conditions, bug activity, fish activity, it's constantly changing. Just because you were catching tons of fish last week on a certain fly, doesn't mean you're gonna head out to the river this week with that same fly and get the same result. And this leads us into the C of our ABCs, which is environment. Referring back to our four fly types, what conditions call for us tying on a dry fly versus a nymph versus a streamer? Let's start at the bottom and work our way up. Because a majority of a trout's diet comes from food sources below the water surface, there's never really a bad time to tie on a nymph. Some conditions that might make it more likely to catch fish on nymphs are if you don't really see much happening. No bugs out, no fish rising. It might also pay off to fish with nymphs if you're fishing deeper water or at colder times of the year. But like I said, fish are always eating below the surface. So when in doubt, tie on a nymph. Streamers are also a good fly to tie on a majority of the time. Fish are always on the prowl for bigger sources of protein. So a streamer might just be the ticket, especially if you're trying to catch a big fish. It's also a good idea to tie on a streamer in low light, murky water, high water, or colder water conditions. Working our way up the water column, what about dry flies and emergers? These flies seem to work best when there's bugs actively hatching or falling into the water. This is usually during the spring and summer months when bug activity is at its peak. Before determining if we should go with a fully blown dry fly or an emerger, we need to briefly cover rise forms. Remember those baby bugs that are traveling from the bottom of the river and emerging into adults at the surface? It takes a keen eye, but you can actually tell if fish are eating emergers or adults by the way they rise to the surface. This is what we refer to as a rise form. Fish that are keyed in on the emergers just below the surface or trapped in the surface film will eat and only their fins or tail will break the surface. In contrast, fish coming up and out of the water or breaking the surface with their nose, these fish are most likely eating the adults as they float along the top of the water. So during an active hatch, if you see lots of fins, tails, and subtle eats, an emerger is probably the way to go. If you see splashy, aggressive takes with noses breaking the surface and fish flying through the air, it's time for a dry fly. But keep in mind that this is a slightly more advanced tactic if you're dealing with really picky fish. If you find yourself on the river during the warmer months of the year and you've got bugs flying around, I doubt many fish are gonna turn up their nose to a delicious looking dry fly. Now that we've covered the ABCs of fly fishing flies, as promised, Let's go through a few time-tested, classic, proven patterns that no matter where you're fishing, eastern rivers, western rivers, if you're fishing for trout, these are gonna get the job done. Let's start with the nymphs. Some of our favorites include the zebra midge, Frenchie, hare's ear, prince nymph, pheasant tail, rubber legs, copper john, and San Juan worm. For dry flies and emergers, we love the Parachute Adams, Blue Wing Olive, PMD, Sparkle Dunce, El Caracatus, Griffiths Gnat, Chubby Chernobyl, and a Stimulator. For streamers, you've got to have Wooly Buggers in a bunch of different colors, Thin Mints, Autumn Splendors, Leeches, Clouser Minnows, Crystal Buggers, and Slump Busters. And if you haven't seen them already, we've tried to make it really easy for everyone. So we've put together a bunch of different fly collections that cover all the major bug types, food sources, and fly types. Our hope is that you can spend less time worrying about if you have the right flies and more time out on the water trying to figure out which one the fish want to eat. I'll throw a link in the description if you want to check those out. All right, we've got a solid understanding of what flies imitate and their different types. But what if there was some kind of formula, some way that you could analyze your surroundings and figure out how to pick the right fly every single time you went to the river? That's exactly what we're gonna cover in the next video. We're talking all about how to pick the right fly.